puts her to bed. She goes across to Dottie's, then she comes home, and Amanda is gone. Who would take my little girl? She never hurt anybody. A four-year-old child is on the street. If we don't catch the abductor by day one, only about 10% are ever solved. This is day three. Do you know people in the neighborhood who don't talk to the police? One or two. We want to hire you to augment the investigation. I just want my daughter back. It's all right. We're going to find her. You have to promise me. I promise. <laughs> you ever investigated an abduction before? I think Mr. McCready was hoping that we could help with the neighborhood aspect of this investigation. Half the guys you know are degenerates. And you know what the other half are? What? Cops. Don't hold it against me. Guess who? You asked me to find some people for you. I think I found them. What are you saying you didn't do it? Fine. If it turns out you're lying, I'm gonna bribe cops to go after you, and I'm gonna tell everyone I know that you're a CI and a rat. And I know a lot of people. At least two guns in the house. What else? Squad will be here in five minutes. You're not gonna wait for them? We're not waiting. He lied to me. I can't think of one reason big enough for him to lie that's small enough not to matter. You're gonna think long and hard before you start running around here investigating the police. Let it go. Coming here trying to get noble, boy. And don't try to take on something you don't have the shoulders for. You gotta take a side. If you beat a child, you're not on my side. If you see me coming, you better run because I'm gonna lay you down. This child, is all I care about. And we're gonna bring her home. Tell him I'm sorry. What did you do? Where I come from, you die with your secrets. This is the kind of thing that if you do, Patrick, you want to be sure. Are you sure? No. I always believe it was the things you don't choose that made you who you are. But in those things you don't choose, sometimes they're for the best and sometimes they lead to regret. Regrets. Everyone has them. Even in today's movie, many of the characters did things that they regret or may regret someday. Heck, even I have regrets. In fact, this podcast and the movie that we're talking about today leads to one of the biggest regrets of my life. Allow me, allow me to explain, please. Uh, but to do so, uh, shut the fuck up. But to do so, let me ask uh, to one of our two fine gentlemen joining me today, let me ask a question. Uh, my good buddy, David, how are you doing? And what movie are we talking about tonight? Yeah, we're talking about the fine movie from 2007, Gone Baby Gone. That is ben correct. His directorial, uh, his directorial, um, his first directorial debut thank you his, his only directorial debut to be but let's anyway the point <laughs> what is my regret with that because all i did was ask him a question about the movie you saw it in, in the description of the uh of the podcast you know what movie we're talking about well i regret that uh earlier this week we you know and if you remember last time when we brought up gone baby gone dave was excited he was like i love this movie i spoke to him quickly over the phone and he I thought he just misspoke when he said, so, okay, have you seen it? Because we're watching Gone Girl, right? And <laughs> I immediately said, oh, no, you mean Gone Baby Gone. And I will never forgive myself for not saying, yep, 
it's gone girl and not letting him walk into this completely prepared to talk about the Ben Affleck movie that he's in gone girl. <sighs> but David, that would have been something. I, I, I just, I was kicking myself and I said to him, damn it. I, I messed up right away. Just completely. Uh, I just blew it. But um, my friend, how are you doing? And what are you drinking this evening? I'm doing great. I just uh, had a great time in New York City. Uh, we got to see the play, The <laughs> Notebook. <laughs> do, do you need tissues? It seems like you're crying. Someone offered me tissues. They thought I was weeping with the rest of the audience. I was not. I was actually laughing. Uh, you and, proposed be- after the play or before it? So, and I'm drinking Pinot Grigio because it's all I had in my fridge. So. Ooh, snobby, classy. I don't even know. That's like wine of some kind. I'm not drinking something quite as classy, but I have no regrets that tonight I'm enjoying a nice Bud Light Lime. Bud oh my Light God. Lime. It's Frank. lime time. Mm-hmm. It's Dave, you, you think can... you're better than us? You think you're better than us, don't you? Oh, that accent, that accent. And who is that voice we hear? Uh, joining us, as always, is a man who, if you come at him uh, in our text feed, he's going to get a discourteous on your ass. Mr. Christopher Mars, how are you doing this evening? tonight and whatever sir and what are you drinking and i think i know the answer because i saw something in this movie i said someone's going to be drinking what exactly. doing well uh, i'm not ex- you know you didn't see this in the movie you heard it mentioned uh F- fat dave certainly did not make this martini that fat bastard so i did this you true. make I me a martini but th- you know there was another right there was other booze referenced and drank by Yes. certain character near the there's, end there's um, an unedited scene where lenny clark drinks a bud light lime again maybe no yes yes a, a, a much funnier we have a, a much funnier version of <laughs> lenny clark this movie gentlemen i've never seen it before actually david is this your first time seeing it too this is my first time seeing it yes could you get further what? away from your could you get you further away from your great. phone we might we might be able to hear you uh, didn't you say it was first- great yeah, because I thought we were talking about Gone Girl. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. For, for, for David movie. Fincher, by the way. Yes, great movie too. But no, my first time. Yes, me oh, as well. This... What a what a lighthearted fun romp. Yes. What well, what were you fellas doing? Um, I have no you know, idea why. When you heard a Boston <laughs> movie, a true Boston movie, directed by Affleck, uh, I don't know what I was thinking. Affleck's directorial debut, based on the fantastic books of which I have read all of uh, Dennis Lehane books. I have never read a Dennis Lehane book, but oh. I sent a picture earlier today of my time uh, my time spent with Mr. Dennis Lehane. Back in 2013, he uh, posted an, something on Facebook or something this. where yeah. uh, he lost a beagle, and he was asking people if they could help find oh. his beagle. Are you kidding? And I'm not kidding at all. Uh, Tammy and I went into, you know, wherever it was, it wasn't Boston, but it was like on the outskirts of Boston. He was yeah, there, him and his wife, he, he thanked everybody. He gave everyone Dunkin' Donuts gift cards for helping. And not only that, but I think it was a channel five camera followed me around a little bit while we were going. Never. I never saw any footage, never saw any story, never saw anything. I don't think the dog was ever recovered, but we did uh, spend a couple hours walking around with our dog. Uh, just looking for a dog for for Dennis Lehane, the writer of the book Gone Baby Gone that this film was uh, based on. Screenplay by Ben Affleck. And Aaron, look at that. That's called a segue by Ben Affleck and Aaron well Stockard. Uh, and of course, directed by Ben Affleck from the year 2007, starring his brother, Casey Affleck, Michelle Monaghan, who until I looked it up, I said, oh, he loves her because she's in she's in the town, too. Nope. Morgan Freeman nope, that's and not Ed Harris. It has a Rotten Tomato score of 94% on the critic side, 86% on the audience side. Maybe they just don't they don't like, like uh, they don't like a lighthearted comedies. Uh, and it has a 72 meta score, whatever the hell that means. On a budget of 19 million, it pretty much broke even. 20 million at the box office in the US, another 14 million internationally. It wasn't a um you know, it wasn't a big, it's a small movie. So it's a small mm-hmm. Miramax movie. It had one Oscar nomination, which when I'm watching this, I'm going, oh, she was nominated, right? I kind of remembered and uh, I was like, but I wasn't sure. Amy Ryan 
nominated for Best Supporting Actress. Incredible. She do you know do you know who she lost to? Uh 2007, I don't. The uh Tilda Swinton for um what's it's Michael Clayton. Very good. Well done. It's uh a great movie. and I don't think I would have realized how good Amy Ryan was in, unless my kind of knowledge of her is, is in the office, right? She is fucking incredible as a you know southie dorchester type yeah. uh person too you, you you know they do have a lot of affleck used a lot of you know locals and uh and as extras oh, and you then tell. You, you know right but she fits right in you know what i mean yeah. like she's she's incredible uh i didn't i didn't even recognize for a second because it's all like first of all it's a long time ago but it's not that far from the period where she did the office either. Oh, so. I don't think so, right? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So she definitely did a great job of camouflaging herself in this movie. Because completely she, she fits right in. She's At such a time, scumbag. You, people probably just thought, oh, this is they got this, you know, local person to do this shit. To be so a I, complete scumbag. <clears throat> yes. I um read all of Lane's books. I, I, Mikey, you honestly would love them. You know I what I mean? Like I, you love the Lee Child book. He he wrote Shutter Island is one of the most disturbing, amazing books I ever read. The movie it wasn't it actually wasn't didn't live up to yeah. the book, the incredible book. Um and Mystic just Rivers, the, Patrick, the other big one. Yeah, the Patrick Kenzie uh, Angie Gennaro books. There's about four or five of them. There's oh, another so one that I've always hoped these characters they would make a movie. Ah, oh, I didn't yeah. realize that. It's in, it's it's just there's there's another one. It's just a serial killer. It's it's I, I've always hoped they they make they made a movie. I may uh, have to jump into that. This, Darkness, take my hand. It's called. Knowing that this was you know a well known uh, mystery book and watching it, I'm like this feels like a book where it's you think you're going some way and then all of a sudden nope you're going this way and then and then the big twist. It just felt I don't know. It just felt. Bookish. I don't know if that even is a right yeah. way of great, saying it. Well, but... you know, great, right, great screenplay. Yeah. Um, what what uh, Affleck was great, right? Casey Affleck yeah. was oh was incredible. amazing in that role. Uh, I love just the voiceover at the beginning. You know what I mean? Like he, yep. he's a great. When you hear him on a, uh, I think it was the beginning of the Bruins playoffs or something. He does oh, the voiceover, do and it's like, That's... yeah, he's it's perfect. He he's, does a great job at at that. But I just love the. The, the setting, the, you know, the real people, like I said, I think Ben Affleck does a great job for a debut. Yeah. You know, I mean, he, I wonder how much, you know, like, cause performances he does. Yep. I mean, this is 10 years after Goodwill hunting almost. Right. But I'm even there. He's already in yes. the, the world of, you know, making movies, you know, like not just yep. being an actor, but like, you know, the behind the scenes aspect of things. So at that point, just picking, brains from you know picking right and, and, and then, and then the lady better lady does the town what's that i think it's also Who's a better great, actor the better actor i think casey does a really good job and he probably he is, won yeah. best actor i mean in another huh? movie he he won best actor for uh, manchester by the sea yeah so i just i watched that last night after i, watched I think he's yeah he's movie. definitely a better actor yeah better much better actor so good he's also uh, in yeah, yeah, I think he's the voice of reason in this movie, uh, when everything is so freaking crazy. Yeah, uh, we'll get to that debate, Dave. Yeah. So, what did you think of it, though? Yeah, I, I, I was surprised. I, I honestly thought you uh, had seen it. Oh uh, no, I actually I liked good, it a lot. Good twists, huh? Yeah, it was good. Good twists. Well, Harris a, was great. A lot of twists. There was like three twists. Right. It yes. was. Yeah. Very uh, disturbing. Like, pretty much it. You gone down another hole, and then you get down that hole. I call the ending, but I mean, you kind of see a little bit with Morgan Freeman's character, kind of that whole backstory. But it took mm -hmm. a while to get there, so there's a lot of twists and turns in this movie. It was, it was to your point, very bookish, I guess. But I think they did a great job of actually putting that into play. So before yeah, you know, getting to what. Kenzie Plot. does at the end do yep. uh, how, how would you or do you agree with the decision he made that's, a, that's so my a, wife and I had a debate right that's the debate right at the movie 
Me too. Well, not my wife. I don't have a wife, but the girl I hang Yet. out with. Her. <laughs> Today. No. Um. <laughs> so, of course, and my wife and Jess was like, oh, yeah, he, he made the wrong decision again. <laughs> and I was like, uh, you know, maybe, you know, when you see her, right. uh, her go back to the old old way oh. a little she might she might you know she i don't think she's the same you know a drug mule maybe partier that she was she was uh, earlier wasn't far off so no but um i mean one thing i thought of this time around was so he promised i know his mother the you know not a great not a good mother um obviously after uh, Lionel tells that story. By the way, Titus Wellington, great job. He's from Boston. He was in the town too. We mentioned it before. Wait, great mustache, from, right? I didn't even realize he's from around here. I just thought, oh, he pulls he out the accent. He is. It looks like he um, should be British. He overdoes it too. With his right? name too. Uh, true. Um, but one thing I didn't think of, it's like, so, you know, the, the neighborhood and everybody thought she was kidnapped and, you know, murdered or whatever. Um in the exchange that's how she was supposedly murdered um or died just accidentally during the the exchange but so i mean the neighborhood thinks is a kidnapper there really is, is no kidnapping so so you know it's kind of like terrorizing the neighborhood yeah. with if he didn't say anything but also like they really make their own rules right like maybe oh, oh this is the main thing like she he's going to be you know uh amanda is going to be have lived a lie she's not she's going to find out on the internet that she was kidnapped you know what i mean right. her oh, life right. will be upended it's yeah. you know someday down that there was no you know there was yeah no i'm saying if she whatever. didn't she would have they would have never told her but maybe they would have wouldn't have been around but she would have found out her whole life was a lie a lie that she got kidnapped yeah. you know it's insane also not that cheese was oh great character but not that cheese was a nice this, nicest guy but they set him up and and murdered him to you know to make the to to make the kidnapping yeah all covered up and everything you know so i think he, the whole the, the 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 narration in the beginning of the movie was his like guiding light yeah the, the oh, i love that I, yeah i love that I and uh, the right, i think he did the right thing uh first that i was with the was like no he did the wrong thing she had no chance with that person i'm like no he did the right thing you have to let her live the life she was born into and that's that's really what it comes down to i love that sh that she was that he was like shocked that uh angie was like no we can't uh can't do this you know and i liked like, his explanation of years from now yeah you, if she finds me you knew and you didn't say anything you know yeah exactly um the one difference between the books is this Angie, the Angie in the books is like really hard nosed and tough. This she's just wonderful. Um, Michelle, yeah, think, yeah, she is. She's, she's sweeter. But I, but I also think that the fact that Casey Affleck's character stayed and watched her at the end with the saddest moment to me. Did you pick up on that? Yeah. Do you want me to say, do you want me to go through the plot and I'll mention that? Yes. Because yeah, when I heard that, I was like, oh my God. Yeah. So subtle, perfect. So um, Dave might not know what we're talking about, but all right, let me put on the Seinfeld glasses and bang out the plot real quick. Dorchester, Mass, four-year-old Amanda. I'm going to say it in my most Boston accent as I as I can. Like you have to I, try. I don't. I don't really have one, but <laughs> four-year-old Amanda McCready has been kidnapped. Uh, private Eye couple: Patrick Kenzie, Angie Gennaro, are hired by the girls' aunt and uncle B and B and Lionel. We want to hire you to augment the investigation of Amanda. Is that right? You know how in uh, John Benet Ramsey, the family hired investigators? Uh, so uh, are the police all right with you hiring outside help? Or? The police need to worry about finding my niece. Hi, I'm Angie Gennaro. I work with Patrick. Hello, I'm B. McCready. This is my husband, Lionel. How do you do? They want to hire us to uh, augment the investigation. You should talk to Precision Investigators. Who? I I don't know. I meant, well, let's hear them out, Ange. Well, aren't you uh, missing persons detectives? Yeah, I... that's what your ad says in the paper. Yeah, we are. We are missing persons detectives. I'm sorry. She, I think that uh, what Angie means to say is just for the sake of disclosure, 
Um, up to this point, our experience has been primarily, you know, finding um, missing persons who've gone missing that they, you know, they, they just stopped payments on the jet ski and they went to New Hampshire. Every police officer in this state is looking for your niece right now. I'm not sure how much more help we could be. Uh, Patrick discovers Amanda's mom, Helene, and her boyfriend are addicts and drug mules for the local Haitian drug lord cheese. And they recently robbed him $130,000. I keep thinking about this thing I heard. You know where I'm going with this? Nope. Did you know I used to work DCU? I give a fuck. <laughs> okay. So I still know some of those guys real well. Anyway, I heard someone rip cheese off on a New Hampshire run. Do you hear anything about that? No. Care to take a polygraph? I already took one. Different questions this time. Come on. It's all right. We don't care about a couple of hopheads beating each other. We care about your child. So come on. How much? You even give a fuck about your kid? Of course I do. And we know you took the money. So just tell us how much you took. How much? How much? How much? A hundred and thirty thousand dollars. Yes, B. After joining forces with detectives Broussard and Poole, they find a boy that boyfriend uh, Ray has been murdered. Patrick tries to negotiate the exchange with Cheese for the money, and Amanda, whom they assume he kidnapped, Cheese denies knowing anything about it. Don't ever come in my spot like that. Wabos mue. You got my money? You leave that shit in the mailbox on your ass way out, you feel me? Some other motherfuckers left full rub on them. I don't play squimmage. But I don't fuck with no kids. The next day, Captain Jack Doyle reads a telephone transcript of a call from Cheese, supposedly, um, setting up the exchange. The exchange at the quarry, great, great setting, huh? Uh, is botched and Cheese is killed. Amanda's believed to have fallen in and drowned. Two months later, a seven-year-old was kidnapped. And Patrick is told by his friend, uh, criminal Bubba Rogowski, who is fantastic in the books. Uh, yeah, that's the guy from the town too. He is. A, yep, yep. He is that same actor. Apparently he has info a about rapper. Oh yeah. Yeah. I remember rapper. looking that up. Yeah. Uh, apparently he has info about known child molester, Colin Earl, Bubba and Patrick go to the house. How great is that scene? And Patrick observes Earl with the chain from the missing child. Mm -hmm. Um, I, that no, night he that returns. guy Earl, just real quick. That guy mm -hmm. Earl was on the show. Oh, so creepy. I watched this. I'm glad I actually saw the other show first. It's my, uh, our flag means yes. yes. It's the pirate show on HBO, where it's like oh, yeah, a comedy, you know. But seeing him, in, like it's so lighthearted in that. Seeing him in this is like, oh my god. Yeah, he's got that disturbing hair lip and the half yeah. shirt, and yep. um. So that night. He returns with Broussard and Poole, where Poole's fatally wounded. Patrick finds the murdered child and executes Earl. Wait. Later on, a drunken Broussard tells Patrick a story about Ray, whom he earlier claimed to not know. I planted evidence on a guy once. Back in 95, we were paying 108 ball to snitches. We get a call from our pal Ray Lekansky. Couldn't find enough guys to rat out. Anyway, he tells us there's a guy pumping up an apartment up in Columbia Point. We go in, me and Nikki. Fifteen years ago, when Nikki went in, it was no joke. So after Poole's funeral, Patrick meets with his police friend Devin, uh, who tells him Bruce Todd and Doyle knew about Cheese's stolen money before he did. Patrick then gets Lionel to meet with him, uh, him and Angie at a bar, where Lionel says he and Remy took Amanda to stage a, a fake kidnapping so they, they could keep the money for themselves. He was, he was t lying to them to still cover up. I come up to check on Amanda. She was alone as usual. I was reading her story when Helene and Ray come home. They didn't know I was there. They started talking about how they'd robbed this drug deal. They were talking about leaving the state. 
So I called Remy and told him. And then what? We took him. Remy laid out this plan. It seemed easy. We take her, Fossilly and Ray to cough up the cash. Then we put her back, you know? Amanda gets to spend a weekend in the country. My sister learns a lesson. And fuck it. Everybody gets paid on top of it. Remy comes in staging a robbery to try to keep Lionel silence, ends up getting shot and dies. Patrick's questioned by the police where he realizes Doyle is involved after hearing the police don't use transcripts on calls to the station. Patrick and Angie go to Doyle's and find Amanda is living with him and his wife. Doyle admits he was part of the kidnapping, helps set up Cheese to be framed, tries to convince Patrick she will have a better life, which Angie agrees with. She's happy. What? She's happy here. I saw her. And she don't do this. If you call the police, they will send her back. Not sending her anywhere. Helene is her mother. She's better off here. Why? Because he's got money and he makes her sandwiches? Because he loves her. Helene loves her too. Helene doesn't treat her that way. Oh, maybe she'll change. She won't change. People don't change. Helene is arsenic. Angie, I know that this is hard. Look at me. I know it's hard. But I need you to stand by me. I need you to say we're going to make the right decision and we're going to make everything okay. Everything will be okay. Because we're going to leave her here, and every now and then, we're going to talk about her and where she is and about what grade she's in. And that'll be OK, because we're going to know what school she's in, and we're going to know she's happy, and she's got birthday parties, and she smiles every day, and she has sleepovers. Amy, I'm sorry. But you can't ask me to do something that I can't do. You can't ask me to live with it. She says she will hate him if he returns Amanda to her mother, which he ends up doing. Because of his promise and his belief that she belongs with her mother, Doyle and Lionel are arrested. So Patrick visits Helene at the end, after Angie moves out or gets her things, uh, ends up volunteering to babysit for Amanda, with Patrick finding out Helene didn't even know the name of her favorite doll. Yeah. Oh. Uh, and wondering if he made the right choice. That was so... so... It was, uh, well done. What was the, the doll's name? It was, Again, she's, like, he's like, oh, it's Maribel. She goes, Annabelle. And you thought, oh, my God. Yeah. The mother didn't even get that right. Well, she was all coked out. I mean, That's you know. True. But maybe she turned, you know, <laughs> turned over a new leaf. I think like, he was even more invested in this girl's life than he anticipated about being. Yeah, I want him to, like, raise her now. So you guys no, know I, there's a sequel. I think, yeah. <laughs> I got the, the book. No, there is a book. I oh, really? gotta read these things now. There's a 10 year later book where she's oh. kidnapped again, but she disappears again. It's fucking taken two. I it's, gotta. It's it's awesome. It's not as good as. Uh, I think I, these I, books are incredible. They really are. I love Ed Harris's character. Oh, he's great. He so oh, many he's so good. That's the that's a really debatable character. I think from a, from a morale standpoint, I think the guy was. Yeah, I mean, he kills right, he's murdering people left and right, but he. You know, I, I love that scene. Fucking A! You gotta take a side. You molest a child. You beat a child. You're not on my side. If you see me coming, you better run because I'm gonna lay you the fuck down! That's, yeah. That was a great, you, great you, line. You, you touch a kid, he, you hurt a kid, yeah. yeah. He was great in this movie. His acting was... When he... Robs the when he comes into the bar, it's because oh, you assume he's gonna, yeah, but it's because he thinks Lionel's gonna talk, right? Is that why? Yeah, okay. so he's gonna kill him, right? And then Patrick makes the ballsy comment to say, yeah. Remy Brissant, Amanda McCready was taken by Remy Brissant. Oh my god, Amanda McCready was taken by Remy Brissant. Wait, wait, Remy Jesus, Brissant. Oh, god damn it, Remy Brissant, Amanda Jeez. McCready was taken by I told Remy him, I told him, I took him for ransom. I told Remy Brissant took Amanda McCready. So so everyone knows. Th that's the great scene where Lionel hadn't hadn't had a drink in 25 years. Yeah. And he orders, I almost went with three shots cutting a tall boy. And you you did think he was going to get shot, didn't you? Yeah. Oh, he's yeah. like, what, what, you know, one of my best lines in the movie was by uh, Ed Harris, by Remy. He said, uh, it don't sound familiar, Helene. He's a violent, sociopathic 
Haitian criminal named Cheese. Either you know him or you don't. <laughs> You're right. I, she's like, it sounds familiar. I love John Ashton seeing him again. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I one of my favorite lines was she doesn't do a lot of coke. Yeah, she drinks every day. She's got the gene, you know, the disease. Our parents had it too. She was drugs. I think she does a little coke. How much is a little? I don't know. A few times a week, maybe. I mean, how much is a lot? A few times a week's a lot. And she does a lot. I don't know anything about that. She does a lot. Yeah, that was great. Great line by, uh, you know, just by Helene. When she says, when she's talking in the back seat, the exchange with her and, and Angie is like, this girl's a fucking scumbag, right? Oh, they're talking about the boyfriend. And well, you used to go with Scott Flaherty, didn't you? How do you know? Yeah, I went to St. Mark's. I was a freshman when you were a senior. You don't remember me? No. Whatever happened to Scott? Uh, he stabbed a foreign exchange student in the chest. He got life and well, well, he's a faggot now. He's kind of a faggot in high school. Oh, man. You're terrible. <laughs> he was cute. <laughs> he's like a, a foreign exchange student. He just had bad work. What's that? They used some pretty uh, inappropriate words that would kill you oh, she today. Sure did. She, she <laughs> but sure. they were very, very, very applicable. You know what I mean? That were used by many people. Uh, oh yeah. You know, especially with that accent. Yeah. They're exactly. still used by many people with that accent. In Methuen. Yeah. Right. I love uh, one more line by Ray, by uh, Remy. I'm sorry. Which when they find Remy's body, uh, Remy made poor relationship choices when they were asking. Go ahead, Dave. When they're to the pedophile's house. Uh, the yeah. Of those. Uh, With uh, Hector Salamanca. Or what, yes. The guy from. Uh, what is so creepy seeing him in that role? Seeing him without an accent. Just without like, Just completely. Yeah. But well, Are you talking about the murdered child, Dave? Yeah, that was disturbing, I guess. <laughs> well, yeah, obviously. They no, the, and they fat, showed lady, just... the fat lady oh. was. Oh, oh yeah, that lady was so, like, oh. just when they sold him the drugs. I loved Bubba in that scene. You know what oh, I mean? Oh, great! Patrick, shoot this bitch! Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He had no care. He had zero care in that scene. Excuse me. Where the fuck you think you're going, Mr. Miller? I'm warning you. Stop. Patrick, shoot this bitch. You fat, busted cunt. You put a gun on me, you better use it. Just give us a fucking whizzer. Mikey, you got to read tomorrow. You don't have to read them in order. I know. Although I'm I, sure you will. I kind of have. Well, at least I have to read that in order. Not all the Dennis Lane, but all the Kenzie books. I guess, kind of. It's, it's just the way it is. Yeah. Um, the scene where he's in the bar. But the guy's like, who are you talking to? What are you talking to? You know, and he, I thought he was going to get up and be like oh, this yeah, badass and beat so the shit great. out of him. Yeah. But he didn't have to. He just pistol whipped him instead. If you ever want to get fucked, let me know. How's that, motherfucker? Now you know. Your fucking mouth's closed. What? You want to say some shit, Fat Dave? Fuck you. Fuck you. Make me a martini, you fucking fat bastard. Make the fuck out. Make me a fucking martini, you fat fucking retard. Those guys were great. Yeah. Fuck yep. you. You think you're better than us, and you, you know you. Uh, Even comments, that guy explaining. You're, you're gonna ask like a Skippy John. The bartender was a real local, I guess. The other guy was great too. What are you doing talking to these guys? No, it's the not guy, like that. Yeah. That guy that, who yeah, was guy talking. That, great too. Yes. Just like in the short great little job. time he was in it. Yeah. Well, if I had the yeah. case tap there, wait, and still like fuck off. Yeah. Oh, ballsy. ballsy character. What's that? He was ballsy. Yeah. I, I yeah. it made me think like he knows talking to cheese like that too. He knows these guys are all talk. At least, well, maybe not cheese, but he. Well, he told cheese at least the cops are outside, so there's that. I guess. Yeah. Um. I. But that you were talking about the scene where they just, I mean, they show you know clothing and then the, i don't even want to go into what they showed but they just 
barely show yeah. a, fa- a head. That yeah. was that was worse than just you know if they like, yeah it isn't but just the the uh, it was almost un- like he looked didn't want to focus you know right. didn't want to focus and then they but still you know, they they cut to him throwing up oh, and then I thought they did a it, very effective awesome well done the way and then he just you know puts a gun yeah. to his head and blows his brains out and uh, no the, repercussions it, like you did the right, right. thing just well they were I mean yeah right they were he, like. Especially he when the, a cop thing. got shot and killed at the house, yeah. you know, or late, died later. Say that again, Dave. He just said he feel like he said if he could do it all over again, he wouldn't have done that. That I, I think that kind of weighed on his decision later too, which he was like, yeah. I, I, I don't, I don't feel good about like I don't. It's not up to me. I mean, he, he definitely, definitely did the right thing though. Um, I love when Angie jumps into the into the water when they're like. They didn't know what to do. And then she's like, like this, uh, you know, taking over here and just jumps in the water, jumps in the Quincy. That was in Quincy, right? The Quincy quarry. The quarry. Um, what other scene was I going to mention? Excuse me, Ray. Oh, oh she's, when saying, she's saying the movie title. And if that girl only hope is you, will I pray for her? Because she's gone, baby. Uh, that's what I was going to say. We we love, yeah. That's good. It's great, great, great stuff. If she, if you're her only hope, she's gone, baby. Gone, gone, girl. She's gone, girl. She's that's what Dave thought, gone. Thought he he snaps his finger. <laughs> she's gone in sixty seconds. Now Morgan but, Freeman, Morgan Freeman's dialogue when he's talking about how he knows uh, what it's like to, to lose a child. That was pretty powerful. That was a powerful scene too. You have any children, Mister Nero? No, sir. My only child was murdered. She was 12. Did you hear about it? What you probably didn't hear, and what I hope you never have to deal with, Mr. Nero, is what that feels like, what I have to deal with. Knowing that my little girl likely died crying out for me to come and save her. And I never did. My little girl died afraid and alone shallow dish bank at the side of the road not 10 minutes from my house I know what it feels like to lose a child now damn it you forced my hand and then you questioned the way I handle it no one's questioning you sir I honor my child with this division so that no parent has to go through what I've known this child. It's all I care about. I'm gonna bring her home. It was, but you know, and, and that also kind of set up. You know, bread gave you breadcrumbs. Yeah, I didn't. Yeah, just the, his delivery of every every line is always has such weight to it. Yes, the way he just, you know, it's like very good this, movie. This was is Morgan Freeman saying this. Picked. Uh, What's that? It was, it was a little predictable at the end, but it wasn't predictable to get to that point. I don't think so. I thought it was really yeah, I don't movie. think I don't think anything was predictable. But, I well, didn't pick. I up knew it was going to happen because it. I read the book. Yeah. I uh, how did you watch it? I watched it on. Uh, I got it for free through my library. Support your library, Hoopla. I I do I use that all the time. Uh, actually, yeah, that the last time I watched it, I I used Hoopla. I think I saw it. Um, on one of the it commercial, free, it was on Tubi too. Freebie, oh Tubi, Tubi. Tubi yeah. I watched it the first time, and uh, Hoopla the second time. The, the commercials aren't too bad on those; they go pretty quick. No, yeah. no, but excellent movie. I think. I'm excellent, glad you guys enjoyed excellent. it. Uh, <laughs> yes, I I quite enjoyed it. I it's another one of those where it's like, what the hell? I miss, I've been missing this movie for you know 18 years. Of the I did a Catholic double feature though, so it was good. That and then it's just about the sea, which we we might that, do that someday. Uh, that movie's a masterpiece. I that I that you can't say anything, Dave. Like you can't say anything. Don't say anything to me. Yeah. Like even how you felt about it. I um, know it's depressing. I know it's something. I mean, to but do you with... you see you see the trailer and you're like, oh, it's like, depressing. But right, you like, don't know. Like you don't know. Custody kids. <laughs> something. I just don't know anything. Dave about and I gotta talk about it on the side. But um. We're not doing that next. No, no, no. We are next doing time, the judge. 
they're doing David's favorite, favorite Dave movie. the Judge. <laughs> the Judge. What? Netflix what told, did Netflix tell you to watch the Judge? I, I know. Oh, I watched the Judge. I liked it. I yeah, because like Netflix told cast. you. You're such a. You're such a. You're, you're such a. Sheep. No, I watched it because I like. I like the actors. Robert Duvall was good in it. Yeah, he, he was good. He was good. So was Robert Downey Jr. Very okay, so, sub bar like, movie. Not every movie has to be a masterpiece. It was no, always it's a, cr- it's a crappy movie. movie. Well, you know what movie? It's Let's cr- just watch the segue. You know what movie is a masterpiece? Sorry, Mike. The yep. movie we're doing next. But I don't want to say what that I love movie it. is. David, why don't you tell everybody what movie are we doing next? No idea. <laughs> I, at least you didn't like try to fake it. I'm glad uh, you know he, he's going to say, "Oh yeah," when you say it. We are going but back. What's your name, Scumbag? To 1987. Sorry. And we're going to watch anything you want, as we go back to Stanley Kubrickville to see Full Metal Jacket. Oh, hard. Get your hand down. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. He, he remembers. He he he's very busy, but every so often he um he checks the text. But he's never too busy like to call me. And we were we were giggling like like schoolgirls yesterday. We were both eating an apple while we were talking to each other on the phone. It was it was quite <laughs> it was it was quite the conversation. Okay, Full Metal Jacket is literally like two separate movies all in one. I'm not yeah, even we sure I remember that. the. I I remember it up to a point. I couldn't tell you if I even saw the second half. I don't remember. I can't so wait long. to talk more about it. Kubrick and what a maniac. He seriously sounds like such a maniac. I mean, we talked about last, We had last movie. No, no, no. But it's I, was his last movie, right? Yeah, I wish I was his last. Yeah, one which is actually like this. I, this probably ago. was his second last right? movie because I can't think. And of AI in didn't count. All right, Did he, he was supposed only, to do that. He was supposed to do that, and then Spiel, yeah. Spielberg, right? Yeah, yeah. I never saw it. Oh, um, I did, but yeah, we will talk about a lot about Kubrick and uh, oh, looking this a lot of clips, a lot of oh, clips from God. one of my favorite no, performances. Don't of say all that. Time. That's what, I, oh, it's rough because I'm I'm closing yeah, in on this movie one will be month. quick. This yeah, one will be quick. <laughs> a nice. Quick That's why I. Four, yeah. four hour, I wanted to do a foreign film because there's no clips. It's a foreign language film. Oh, all this. Yeah. That'll have to be the second one in June. Uh, but that's next time. Until then, everyone. You can find us on Twitter at fine underscore movies, on Instagram at threads at fine movies, fine spirits. You can find Dave wherever espresso martinis are sold. Uh, and are there any parting words for you, Christopher? Nope. I, I have to take a piss with my penis. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, nope. I got nothing. I, I'm just on a any... always sunny kick. It's yes. Just... I, you know, it took me. I'm like, I rem, I've heard that recently, and I forget what I. All my Instagram is now is clips of Sunny. Oh, and YouTube. That's all they in the sidebar. That's all it is. David, uh, before I ask, uh, where are you in Sunny? Uh, season twelve. So then you uh, you definitely saw them try out for the Eagles. That's way many years ago. Yeah, yeah. where Donovan McNag showed up, and it's Elvin from the Cosby Show. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Isn't yeah. that the guy from the Cosby Show? Hey everyone, I'm Don McNabb. So you watched the gang goes out to the gang dines out. We watched that again last night since we watched every episode. Wait, have you seen the gang moves to the suburbs? Isn't that season twelve? Yeah, that was hilarious. Fucking That's the funniest stuff. episode of all time. Was, uh, yes, fantastic. Oh, David, any parting words from you? No, I'm tired. Oh, you're, you're going to sleep. All right, then say oh, say good night, David. Good night, guys. You know, that's a new one. We talk about great movies while drinking. We talk about great movies while drinking. Yeah, we talk about great movies while drinking. And we feel fine. Ready to yeah. rock and roll. All right. I always believe it was things you don't choose that make you who you are. But in those things you don't choose, sometimes there are things that are the best things. Fuck. Okay, wait a minute. Let me do this again. Maybe you should drink. <laughs> I... <laughs> so...
sorry. <laughs> just got me. I don't know why. That... Is this an always sunny uh, <laughs> oh, my... blooper reel? <laughs> <laughs> shit. <laughs> oh, he could always eat a shit sandwich. That would be cool. <laughs> Fabs not experts.